come and have fun with Drupal. Welcome back. This is Elias Barbosa from Drupal Fever. What we are going to do here on this video is set up VirtualBox. Let's go back to our primary requirements. We are concentrating now on the first step. What is VirtualBox? VirtualBox is an open source software that allows us to create a virtual computer. This virtual computer will run inside a window on your host operating system. Now you may be asking yourself, what is so good about having a virtual PC? What can we do with it? We can install another operating system inside of this virtual PC. Yes. You can have several virtual PCs running all at the same time on your host computer, each in its own window. You can switch between OS just by switching between active windows. The beauty of using a virtual PC is in that we can still use our favorite operating system on our host computer while at the same time get a taste of Linux without having to fully commit to it. To configure a virtual PC within VirtualBox, we're going to have to pay special attention to four things. Number one, the first thing to take care of when creating a virtual PC is the virtual hard drive. When you create a virtual hard drive, VirtualBox will create a file that will take real space on your physical hard drive. If, for example, you set up a virtual PC with a virtual hard drive of 10 gigabytes, the file created by VirtualBox can potentially take up to 10 gigabytes of free space in your physical hard drive. VirtualBox, however, allows you to create what they call a dynamic hard drive. This dynamic hard drive will generate a file that will be only as big as the actual space being used by your virtual PC. This is a very cool trick from VirtualBox. Number two, the virtual CD drive is also a very convenient thing. Your virtual CD drive will link to your physical CD drive and read any CD that you place there. But the virtual CD drive can do more. You can, for example, download a disk image from the internet and connect that image straight into your virtual CD drive. You will no longer have to burn a CD media and stick that CD into your physical CD drive in order to be able to read the CD image content. Oh, by the way, that's what we are going to do when the time comes to install Linux into our, our virtual PC. Three, memory. Memory is a concern. When you create a virtual PC, you cannot share the same memory that your operating system is using. You will have to allocate part of your memory to your virtual PC and leave whatever is left to your host operating system. I usually try to allocate as much memory as I can to my virtual PC, but if I leave too little memory to my operating system, it may become unstable and crash. If my operating system crashes, so does my virtual PC. This is a delicate balance. The only sure answer to this problem is to buy as much memory as you can for your host computer. Well, money should not be a great obstacle to this since um, memory is so cheap these days. 
number four. And now, I would like to talk about the network configuration. This should be very simple, but in many cases, it is the cause of much frustration when configuring a virtual PC. When the time comes to configure your virtual network card, pay special attention. If you do, you will save yourself a lot of aggravation in the future. Okay, enough of theory. We're going to start by opening our internet browser. Mine is Firefox, the unofficial browser for the Drupal developer. Let's type VirtualBox here on Google. We're going to click on the downloads link. There are versions for most operating systems here, but we are going to install the version for Windows. We are saving the file on the default place. Doesn't really matter where. So now let's skip forward. We are not going to wait through the entire download. Now that the download is finished, let's double click on the setup file to begin the installation. We're not gonna mess with the defaults. The only thing I want to get rid of here is the shortcuts. So let's go next here and click on the install button. Okay, the installation is finished. So now let's close everything and go to VirtualBox. Let's click on the new button here to create a new virtual machine. We're going to type CentOS 6 here. And as you can see, VirtualBox recognizes what I'm typing here and puts the red hat icon there. Now we are going to put four gigabytes here for the RAM memory. You may put more or less memory here, depending on how much memory you have available on your host machine. Just make sure you don't go over the green bar here, otherwise your host OS may become unstable. Now let's go next and next, leaving the defaults. Here, remember to leave this option set as dynamically allocated hard drive. Now it's time to select how much space you want for your virtual hard drive. Since you selected dynamically allocated on the previous screen, you can now type a hard drive size that could be even larger than the actual free space you have on your host computer. Let's click on the Create button. Now it's time to change a couple of settings. Go to Network and instead of NAT, select Bridged Adapter. This is very important. We are setting it this way. Just make sure that your virtual PC has no trouble connecting to the network and the internet. Now, let's go to the share folder and click on the plus button to create a new share folder. I'm going to create a folder on my C drive. I'm going to call this folder as share folder. I know, very creative. We should use only lowercase for the Linux folder name and we should avoid dashes and spaces as well. Now we should check out amount and click on the OK button twice. That's it. Now VirtualBox is ready for CentOS. But we will install CentOS on our next video. See you then.